Hello, again. <laughs> this is Gernot with Let's Build Tech Razor with the special series Certification Survival Guide. And we had two episodes already in Certification Survival Guide. And now today we'll come to easily learn to remember with mind maps. So, uh, what have we done and what will we do? Um, we had, the first episode was an overview and interview with Monica about what do you have to do for certification and to talk about someone who just did a certification. And after that, last time I've talked about the learning basics. I will repeat that shortly because that is about repetition and you can watch that again on YouTube. And today it will be an enhancement of the learning basics. It will be how to use mind maps. And the whole thing is from Tony Buzan uh, from his old book or organic study method and this is a book I've used in the last century during my time at the university with great success and now again I'm using it for AWS learning. So let's start what's it all about. Um, at first we will have a little repetition how do you remember through repetition I will talk about list versus picture. The pictures have to be wild. Uh, then, oh, there's a typo in that. The repetition process with the pictures. And then how to create symbols, because usually some technical guys, girls say, okay, I'm not an artist. And so um, you don't have to be an artist. You just have to make sense for you, make it rememberable for you. And at the end, some places of inspiration. So let's start. <laughs> the funny thing about this episode is I will do not type anything. Uh, I will not use VS, use VS Code or my iTerm terminal. I will just use the camera. This is the summary of the repetition process. If we learn something, this will be the amount of information we've got in our brain, we keep in our brain. And if we learn something without repetition, the amount of information is decreasing all the time. Because the brain thinks, ah, you do not use it, so you do not have to keep it. It's like muscles. <laughs> the brain is a muscle. If you don't train, you will lose your muscles. So use it or lose it. So if after an hour of learning we take a repetition, we can keep the things in memory for a whole day. If after the day we make a repetition successfully, then we can keep things in our memory roughly a week. And if we repeat it again, we can keep those things in memory roughly a month. And that's the thing for AWS certifications. Um, cloud practitioner aside, the amount of time you need for an AWS certification is about two to three months. Some people will say, oh, that's very long. It is very long, but it's a um, whole lot of stuff. And it's not so effective to cramp all the things in your brain and try to remember it. It's more effective if you spread it on a long period of time and then you have to remember. Because if you have two months and you learn something in the first week, you will forget it if you don't repeat. So the first thing is repetition. In the last episode, I had the example of EC2 pricing and that you make a list. What types of pricing do you have? On demand, reserved savings plan and spot instances. And the idea was that you 
write all the things down try to memorize it so when you're watching a video or exploring or reading white papers you try to memorize what's in it and write it down and then you put the paper away then use a blank paper and recreate it and if you succeed to recreate everything then it's okay if it's okay you put it to the next day you repeat it again if it's not okay you repeat it again after a day if it's okay after a day you repeat it after a week and so on and so on but a list is not the most efficient thing to remember if I just show you this list and put it away you will not remember so much if you have a diagram which somebody else did yeah, it's very likely that you remember it and if you have a picture what you draw yourself then it's very 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 likely that you remember it and if we take these EC2 pricing models and put it in a picture it could look something like that and this is a mind map so what are the rules of a mind map um, you start with the main thing in the middle and then you draw lines these are the connections and put big letter words on it just the words no sentences and enhance it with symbols and you also use as you see colors so you need a few colors a few pencils and you make it as bright and colorful as possible because if you have this picture in mind just look at it for a few seconds and then I put it away then you know okay um, left up there was something like a spot ah oh, you see a spot and then we had a little figure running as you go and these things only make sense sense for me and th that's the thing it have to make have to be um, that it makes sense for you and it does not have to make sense for anybody else ah greeting devops not very good <laughs> it have not be senseful for anybody else so if you say oh this is not a good picture um, never mind it's good for me so you start with the thing in the middle and you draw the lines put the words on it and use some pictures you came up for yourselves or icons I will show you some icons and have a picture as a whole and what will happen if you try to recreate it you will think about okay there was something uh, right in the bottom um, this is a desk and this desk is reserved so it's reserved instances on demand is as you go then I have a savings plan it's a bag of saved money and the savings plan can be applied to EC2 instances to Lambda and to Fargate and this is always <laughs> the whale with me the docker whale and the savings plan can be applied with compute and you buy an amount of compute time or with instances like t3 large then you have a greater saving but um, it must be applied to an instance so compute time and instance time so this is the mind map now I hear somebody saying okay ah there are great tools for it uh, in my computer I have the mind map app and I also have one on my iPad that's great but not for learning because when you draw this it goes straight from your hand into your mind and you can be quicker 
it will not be perfect it should not be perfect because you will recreate it many times how many times and that is the same as with the list if you learn two hours a day um, you will repeat it the first hour you try to recreate the whole map and if you succeed you go further if not you will repeat it again in the next hour. After an hour, I say, yes, I've got everything. Then you will promote it to the day. Maybe the first day you will not, su not succeed and you have to repeat it to the next day or hour. And you say, okay, after the day is finished, then the week and so on, you promote it. And then with this example, you would have recreated it one two three four five six seven times and it will really stick into your memory you will remember it and if you are learning what you should do and you will do for the associate and the professional professional certification um, you have a period of a few months and so you have to remember what you had the first month some more rules for the mind map is you have to make it loud and funny or annoying. Uh, so something you can remember, something where you can put a feeling on it. Um, if you have, have a joke in mind or you exaggerate things, very good, very good. And you will remember, oh, there is a spot there and there is a bag of money there. You will remember that it's very, very easy to remember. So draw something in the middle, that's a symbol or word, that is the main topic. Then draw lines to the subtopics, put words on the subtopics and enhance it with symbols. Okay. You may say, ah, Gernot has made that up. <laughs> no, I've really used it and for a long time. I have brought some examples. So this is from November 16 and this is um, S3. So you see S3, we have the 11 lines in the middle. Um, then I have consistency with puts and the eventual consistency with overrides. Uh, I have something like a range get and it can be encrypted with one, two, three, four different encryption methods. And this was how I learned S3. So it doesn't have to be really the thing in the middle, straight lines, then the words. It just have to be graphical in one picture so that you can keep it in mind. So now I hear somebody saying, I'm not a picture learner, a more uh, oral, a verbal learner. You may be, but all our brains are wired, usually, if you are not really weird, <laughs> wired in the same way. So the repetition duration from an hour and a day and a week is roughly the same, if you do not have an eidetic memory, and that's um, really rare. And because we are animals with eyes, we are visual, visual, visual animal, we have a large visual brain and so visual representation is a very good thing. Unless you're blind, then you will do that in another way. So another example for that is cloud trail. Put that away. So I have cloud trail in the middle and you see my first baby steps uh, where I try to recreate the official AWS icons. Funny thing is AWS icons has evolved. They are better now and mine somehow also. And with CloudTrail you collect each API call. You can have it in all regions or single and you can store it to S3. And in the log, there's something like the identity, that's a person. 
the time, that's an hour, the IP, that's an IP, and so on. You can use it for compliance audits, security, that's always the lock with me, and change lock. And you see when I say the lock is always a security symbol with me, then you are developing your own symbolic language because you put the meaning in the symbol. If you have something like this, that you say this is um, Woods Mall. Woods Mall. That could be a light bulb. And the symbol is an idea or it could be a symbol for light. And so you put the meaning in the symbols. So two more examples, and that should be enough by then. ECS, uh, it's quite complicated. On ECS, as the service for Beach talk, we have an agent, 007, ECS agent, on Docker, the whale again, and we have a service role, um, which the agent uh, sorry, which the container um, uses. The cluster has many containers and we have a task definition with a revision in the family and so on and so on. So you see, you can really inter interpret the things freely, how to make a mind map or just a good diagram. The last thing is the um, one of the most complicated ones. Um, this is about autoscaling and the autoscaling life cycle um, is you have detaching detached an instance and you have here pending pending wait and pending proceed and in service and there are some more steps and this life cycle is a good example for something you should really learn in a visual way so mind maps drawn by hand with pen and pencil, colorful. It only makes sense to you, or maybe also for some other people, but it only have to make sense for you, things you remember. And then you can very easily learn with that. One question is, how can we create symbols? And there we have some sources of inspiration. And one source of inspiration are the official AWS icons called simple icons. And the simple icons, and you um, can see them if you just search for AWS and simple icons, are graphical representation of the symbols and you do not really have to recreate it in every detail for instance if you have a load balancer it is only a square with an elastic load balancer and if you have a puzzle piece it's an alb and for remembering that it's too small so if you would use a puzzle piece, a big puzzle piece that you had can keep in mind, that would be great, but these symbols are too small to remember them. Then we have Elasticsearch here. And also the symbolic language is that a cluster of services is bound to a color. So this is bound to compute, and this is bound to management functions. This is the SNS topic. This is an SQS, and these symbols are better than the ones a uh, year before. Sometimes you can build together your pieces of your symbolic language. That's, what does that mean? Um, you have the code here, which is a tag, opening and closing tag, and the build, which is, um, how do you call it, Kran in Germany. And I need a piece of paper. Maybe you now say, okay, this is not so easy to draw. 
And I say it is easy. Just try it. Code. That's, oh, sorry. This really is easy. Just put it there. Then you have code, or you just can say zeros and ones. And the um, it's also a square with just some lines. Another square with a triangle. And that is enough. You try to reduce it to really primitives. Circles, lines and rectangles. So AWS Simple Icons is the first source for official icons. But there is an even better source, and this is the AWS Geek with the domain AWS Geek, G E K dot com, Jerry Hargrove. And he's a very good um, artist, uh, which who has become an AWS architect. And you see that he is a really good artist. And this is just one example for that. And in his websites, he has examples for many things. These are good for remembering, not so good for learning because they are not your own, but you can be inspired from the symbols there. Really a lot of things there. It is an alternative uh, language on that. And one thing to note is the periodic table of Amazon Web Services also. So many, so many web services. So we have the simple icons, we have AWS Geek and some more, but the most important thing are your creations for that. Because if I see this very, very, very good drawing, I wouldn't, cannot do that this good, but it's not so good for learning because it's too structured and too many informations on it. You would split it up and you would create it yourself. Please don't take anything just you have seen anywhere and get the structure. You have to structure it for yourself so that it makes sense to you. So we have the repetition. We have a picture is better than a list. We have the rules of a mind map. This is start with a word in the middle. Just use words, not sentences and use some icons and pictures. We have the repetition process, how to create symbols with a symbolic language out of primitives. And we have places of inspiration. And so the summary is, you don't have to be an artist, but use pen and paper. Do not use applications or something on your mobile phone, because it's better if you create it yourself, because it's a recreation of something you have in memory and the recreation is the thing in the certification test you have to prove the recreation not um, the creation another thing with the app is okay I have an app here give me my iPhone <laughs> and if you read something see it if you read something and say ah I know it yes then you think you know it, but it's not proven that you know it because you have to recreate it. So effective is what you remember, what you can recreate, not you say, ah, I remember, ah, oh, tell me, uh, I don't know. So effective is what you remember from the symbols and so on. Pen and paper is more effective. And also don't forget explorative learning. That means get an AWS account, the free tier and make errors and explore. It's fun, so many services, so much to discover. And then what you have learned in the exploration and in the video course and our TechRaiser trainings, that was the advertisement part, that you put on papers, recreate it, learn it, then you will have a great certification. So 
have fun learning. That's it for today. See us on Twitch TV Tech Racer. Read us in the AWS blogs. Thomas said, make some new posts about chef and kitchen and so on. Um, give me feedback on my Twitter handle. Come to TechRaiser to book some consultants, some training, and look at our examples of code in the GitHub space. That was Let's Build for today. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye bye.